the judge refused any counselor, any lawyer, any person. He didn't even want to hear us. He said only one thing. Renounce Christianity, embrace Islam, we're free to go. We didn't move. The sentence came from the judge that three of us should be executed according to the Islamic law. My name is Wajdi Iskander. I am originally from Sudan, from a tribal area uh, in the desert of Sudan. When I was six years old, uh, I memorized the whole Quran from cover to cover because I attended this school. Our tribal religious leader, he said this, be aware of the Christian, burn them before they burn you. So when I heard this, a great anger and hatred entered to my heart. In the university, uh, we have the freedom of, uh, you know, like politics and there's a lot of uh, parties there and freedom of speech. So when I went to join there, I found one group is called the Muslim Brotherhood. So they're religious people. So I said, well, this is the right people to join. So I joined them. Within four months, I became one of the leader because not all Muslim memorize the Quran. At that time also, I met my Christian friend. At the beginning, he will come and tell me about Jesus of the Bible. And every time he will tell me Jesus of the Bible, I will beat him up literally. In fact, sometimes blood will come out of his nose and mouth because I didn't like this Jesus of the Bible. One time he decided to bring a preacher to the university to tell us that the Bible is the Word of God. Muslim, they don't believe that the Bible is the Word of God. It's being changed, corrupt. And uh, so when they started, they took the smallest lecture room. By the time the event get closer, they took the biggest lecture room. Uh, many they signed, they want to know is the Bible is the Word of God or not. We felt very threatened that they're going to convert these people. So, we send a threat notes to the Christian that this event has to be cancelled. They didn't listen to me or to us. Finally, we have our emergency meeting. What are we going to do with this Christian? After a lot of discussion, we decided we're going to kill one of them. And we all rejoiced in that room, in that meeting, that we're going to kill a Christian. The second things we thought about, who we're going to kill. They decided that they're going to kill the Christian friend, who wasn't my friend at that time, and because he preached to the gospel. At that time, I was the one who was more happier that they're going to kill him, because I hated him. We decided that when the electricity go off, we'll attack his room. We waited and the electricity went off. And uh, I pick up a very heavy metal stick. My idea, I'm going to crush every single bone in his body. We went to his room. There were two helping me. We entered very quietly. We saw there's somebody laying there in the bed. And they hold him very tight for me. And suddenly that anger and hatred I have in my childhood came back again. And I just start to beat him up. I can hear his bone crashing. Suddenly he stopped moving. They told me he's finished. Let us get out of here. We left. There were a car waiting for me. They took me to a hiding place. The next day they came and they said, we have a bad news. I told them, what is the bad news? They said, the person that you beat up last night, it was the wrong person. And he's still alive. And every time I shared my story. I feel bad I, I left a paralyzed person in the world. So they told me that now your job is to finish too. To find the paralyzed one and finish him up 
and then the Christian. I told them, no, I cannot do it again. Take responsibility. If you watch the news about the radical Muslim, you know, um, the one they do a suicide bombing and other things, they will not tell who did it. But the whole organization take the responsibility. The release, the press release was that the Muslim Brotherhood of the University did that and I was free to go out as if like I didn't do anything. I went back, finished my study, I studied commercial and economy. I went and I worked for a French company. While I was working for them, it was their anniversary. So they were serving alcohol to the guests. So the tray came by, he picked a glass, I picked a glass, and I didn't know it was alcohol. He started drinking while I was talking. When I finished, I brought the alcohol close to my mouth. And I smelled the alcohol. I felt very offended. In Islam, alcohol is considered one of the biggest sin. In Arabic, they call it Akbar al-Kabair, the biggest of big. You're not allowed to buy it, to touch it, to sell it, to drink it, or to associate with it. If you've done any of these, Will be considered unclean. I went to my cousin who is my friend and he's also with me at the Muslim Brotherhood. He was surprised to see me coming back early and uh, he asked me what happened. So I told him will you keep it a secret? He said sure. So I told him so he jumped away from me. He said you're unclean. I told him no 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 I didn't drink it I didn't know about it. He said no you're unclean. I said please don't tell anyone. He said don't worry. So I told him tomorrow is Friday and uh, it's a day of prayer and I'm supposed to give the announcement in the mosque. Will you give it in my behalf? I don't feel worthy to stand before the Muslims. And he agreed. Our announcement is basically like if the president of the country said anything against our group, we need to teach him a lesson or uh, maybe to kill one of his ministers. If there is a bombing, if there is a burning of a building, a riot, this kind of the things we were talking about because we thought that we are the one we can correct the country. So I gave him the paper. We were sitting in the ground at the mosque. And after the prayer, he stood up and he started to read the announcements. And uh, after he read all the announcements, he said, there is one announcement is not written here. Let us kick out all the Western from our country because they're corrupting our young people. And when he said that, everybody started to kind of agreeing with him. There is a special shouting, it's called Allahu Akbar, God is great. One of it is it's used for prayer and also used for something serious going to happen. So they were all shouting and he got excited. And he said, and the first example of this, and he mentioned my name. In Islam, there is a three stages of faith. Number one, if you see something wrong, you have to act by your hand. That means violence. The second thing, you speak loud against it. The weakest one is to walk out, like what I did at the anniversary because I was outnumbered. So at the mosque, all of them are good Muslims. So when they saw that I associated with alcohol, all of them, they want to express their faith. I was beaten by 800 people. I fainted. I went to our leader and said, why did you do that? And he said, aren't you glad we didn't kill you? But the punishment is still there. For 40 days, you're not allowed to come here. For 40 days, you're not allowed to touch the Quran. For 40 days, you're not allowed to say the name of God in your lips. For 40 days, you're not allowed to pray. I was isolated from any religious practice. One time I was sitting in my office feeling sorry for myself and I started to blame God. If God forgave me, I will not be like what I am now. So the doorman walked in and he said, there is somebody outside, he'd like to see you. So I went, it was my Christian friend, the one I'm supposed to kill. I thought he's looking for a job. He said, no, I'm looking for you. And suddenly he said, what happened to you? The only things I could reply back, I'm looking for forgiveness. And he didn't wait for a second. He said, there's one person can forgive you. I said, who? 
He said, Jesus, and he stepped back. And uh, I said, Jesus can forgive me? He said, yes. I told him the prophet can forgive me? He said, yeah. How? So he shared a story from the Bible about Jesus forgiving sin. I loved it. I told him, can you come back again? One time he came and said this to me, and I never heard it at that time before. He said that God asked him to ask me to go with him to church. I told him, God himself asked you to ask me to go with you to church? He said, yeah, and he was very serious. And I didn't know what to say. I said, okay, I'll go with you. So I went. Um, I was very scared because the idea we have about church is almost like a haunted house. So I was really afraid to go. I went and I sat in the closest seat to the door. Later on, I found out actually I was part of a prayer meeting. So one of the students stood up and said, pray for me. My teacher failed me all the time because I'm a Christian. Will you pray that I might love you? Another one, he said, pray for me. They haven't paid my salary for a long time because I'm a Christian. Will you pray I might love them? And all the prayer requests like this. I said, no way. These people in front of me, one of the two things, whether they're angels or something up here, it's not right. So I waited for them to finish. And when I found out they really finished, I went to the one who was leading. Tell me what are you guys talking about? There's no love. Love only in the movies. I said, what do you mean? I said, well, that teacher, we can beat him up. That company, we can burn it. The other company, we can bomb it. And I was giving them all kinds of ideas. I said, sorry, we don't do this kind of things here. I said, don't worry, I've been trained, I can train you. So he said, no, we don't do these things here. I said, what do you do? So he opened the Bible. It was in the Sermon in the Mount. I didn't know it's the Sermon in the Mount at that time. And he read for me, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute. I said, who said this? He said, Jesus. I said, Jesus the prophet said this? He said, yes. I said, what else he teach? So he said, well, the, the whole book is, is teaching. I told him, I am allowed to touch this book? He said, yeah. So I took the book and he marked for me exactly where he read. I went back home. I waited for the electricity to go off. And I lit a little gasoline light like a candle. And I start to read. One thing is stood in my mind. How does Christian practice this book? This book is very hard to practice. It's easy to hate, but it's hard to forgive and love. A few months went by and my friend appeared again. I believe he kind of understand what I was going through. He said, there is one person I'd like to see you. So he arranged it and we went and uh, we went to this place. They have a lot of rooms. So we knocked one of the, the doors and we walked in. There's this elder lady sitting in the middle of the room. The second I laid my eyes on her, I cursed her. And I give her every bad word I knew because she's from the same tribe I come from. She became a Christian when she was 14 years old through a medical doctor, a Christian medical doctor. He will tell her story from the Bible. And she will go and tell a story to the tribe. And the tribe couldn't silence her. So they decided to burn her alive. And they did burn her, but she was rescued by that medical doctor. After she finished, she kind of brought the, a blanket out of her leg. And all what I saw is a burning flash sticking to her bones. I told her why. She said, I'm willing to be burned for Jesus. And this is exactly what I want to hear. I went and I thought to think and think more about her. Until I went to my friend. And then I told him, I'm ready to become a Christian. He was jumping up and down. Hallelujah. Praise God. I didn't know what he was doing. I almost was about to jump with him. And uh, there is a great peace entered my heart. And I have this piece until now. My 
life started to change without any effort. My family noticed. My father wanted me to go back to the mosque. I refused. I said, well, the place that kicked me out, I will never go back to it. And he said, well, just pray in any other mosque. I said, no. He said, okay, pray at home. I said, no, pray with me, no. He said, what happened? I didn't know where I got the courage from, but I told him I changed my religion. He said, prove it. I brought my Bible. When he saw the Bible, he got very angry. And he slapped me in my face. In fact, I fall down in the ground. And he said, I hate you. You're not my son. I went to my friend and I told him, you know, I don't want this Christianity. So he opened the testimony of Paul, how many times he was beaten, and uh, he'd been put in the prison and all the things he went through. And then he went to the book of Acts about the stuff that has been stoned. And then he went to the gospel about the cross Jesus being crucified. He said, this is Christianity. You're free. And then he said, are you greater than any of these? I told him, no. He said, just pray, God will be your helper. The news is spread. At that time, Sudan became an Islamic state, practicing the Islamic law, the Sharia law. So my family has to uh, give me up. I was arrested. And in that police station, they tried to convince me to go back to Islam. With any objection, they will, they will really beat me up. Um, after that, they locked me for a while, and then they took me to the court. Inside that court, I met other two Muslims who became a Christian. The judge refused any counselor, any lawyer, any person, he didn't even want to hear us, he said only one thing, renounce Christianity, embrace Islam, we're free to go. He didn't move. He left us in the courtroom alone. The two friends, they will look at me and they said, you're new? I said, yes. He said, well, we don't have much time. The only thing is, let us pray. So they were praying and I was watching them pray. And they prayed that three of us will be in the same cell. God has answered that prayer. They put us in one of the roughest, dirtiest prison in the area. But God has answered our prayer. We were three of us are in the same cell. That cell was so special to me because inside that cell, I had my first Bible study. I learned all what I need to learn about Jesus. So they, they will take us out and they will do all kinds of things to us. And they bring us back. They will beat us up, and they will spit us out. They, anything will come to your mind. Happen to us then. But every time when they return us back, looking forward for our Bible study, the sentence came from the judge that three of us should be executed according to the Islamic law. Mahmoud stepped in the platform we were down there and they put the rope around him. They give him his his right, the last word. So he shouted all of his long and he said, Jesus, here I come. The hanger was so angry, he just pulled the platform and Mahmoud was gone. We went back to the cell. Imad was telling me about heaven and what we're going to be doing with Jesus. It's Friday came and they took both of us. Before he stepped in the platform, he held my hand. He said, promise me to come. I told him I cannot promise you. But whatever you're going to be doing with Jesus, pray for me. They put him up in the platform. They put the rope around him and they give him his right, the last word, and he just did like Mahmoud. Jesus, here I come. He shouted with all of his lungs. The hanger was so angry. 
he opened the platform and he met was gone. I was very scared. I left alone. They took me back to the cell. That week, they didn't took me out at all. They just left me there by myself. Many times I want to call the guard, please tell the judge I'm a Muslim. But I couldn't. How could I deny Jesus, the one who died for me, the one who loved me, the one who gave me the assurance of eternal life? I couldn't. I couldn't deny him. Friday came. I was supposed to be executed at 2 o'clock in the afternoon after the prayer. Around 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, very early, we start to hear the sound of machine gun and, and bombing, and that was in 1985 when Gaddafi attacked Sudan. It was a big war between Sudan and Libya. And he wanted to cripple the economy of Sudan, so he attacked the industrial area. The prison were just beside the industrial area. So the, it was also bombed. In the middle of confusion, all of us prisoners, we ran in the different direction. I ran toward the city. I went to that elder lady and uh, she asked me what happened. I told her the Libyan attack us. She allowed me to stay with her until the war ended. And then when the war ended, we didn't know what to do. And uh, she said, do you like to be my son? I'll be honored. And she named me Wajdi. Wajdi is uh, the root of the, the word in Arabic, Shawbi, a desire. And that's a desire to follow Jesus. God was working in Canada. A Bible college have a scholarship for a Muslim convert from a third world country who is interested in mission. And this is how I, I went to Canada. And, uh, and I did my Bible training. And I feel so honored that God is using me to plant church and to preach the gospel. And here I am. And he took me out with the intention of shooting me. I'm going to kill you. When I kill you, go and tell your God that I command I killed you. And I prayed and I said, Lord, if this is my time for me to come to you, I'm willing to come. But please, allow me to die with one more person for you. And as she left, she said, you did not tell me you can speak his son. You said, we cannot. She said, you did. You did all the time. You just speak. Last night we did speak a language. Today, the next time we cannot speak a language anymore. And a couple of times in the church, as a church in Taiwan, and this young lady, half of your size, she flipped me out with one hand, up in the air, like this. I saw a guy in black robes and a staff, and he was waiting for me. So I was asking the Lord, not for me to go to hell. The gospel is supposed to make people into disciples. It's supposed to make them so hungry and desperate for the real Jesus that they'll go to the ends of the earth. Then the next moment, there's two angels with me in the room waiting for me. And I realized this is my time, I'm going home. There was a woman sitting on my couch and I, I asked Holy Spirit what was going on and he actually spoke to me and he said, well, that's a, that's a witch and she's actually here to curse your ministry. She didn't read or write. It turns out she went to one of the most difficult places in this country I'm standing in right now and planted a church at a very, very dangerous place. Witnessing to people is all good, but if you could witness and demonstrate the power of God, that's important. And we have adjusted our theological stances to follow along after the changes in society. So, I mean, I think Jesus was just an ordinary guy with really good ideas. If that is manifest in Buddha, that is God. So I believe it's broader than just Jesus. We call what we have the church. We think that if we go to a building and have a meeting on a Sunday morning, we have the church. We don't have the church. The church is, is not that.
love is not a concept. He is a person and his name is Jesus and the world wants him. They want to experience him.